When we see these patients, we have to think to ourselves, what are the associated conditions? What can we expect from natural history? And what treatment or interventions would be beneficial? And so my objectives are to talk a bit about the epidemiology and classification. We'll talk about this issue of natural history versus surgery, and I'll share with you some changing thinking in many centers in the United States. So all of us are familiar that this is a failure of formation, roughly a one in 50,000 live births, so this is highly dependent upon where you are geographically in the world, and certainly there are a number of anatomic anomalies and associated conditions. Thumb hypoplasia is part of the spectrum, so certainly the most common, but we know from a number of different studies that perhaps a third or more of patients will have associated syndromes with real medical and systemic uh, considerations. A number of these conditions do have genetic testing that's available, including Holt-Orm with its associated cardiac defects, thrombocytopenia and absent radius, which can lead to profound low counts in platelets in infancy, and also Fanconi's anemia, which we all should be aware of. Though unusual, this is indeed a fatal condition for which we as pediatric orthopedists can make the proper diagnosis early on. Here's an example of a chromosomal breakage test that is used in many centers to make the diagnosis. We know that the classification historically has been based on that of Bain and Klug, depending on the degree of radial deficiency. And most of the patients we care for are really Bain type three or four patients with incomplete or absent radii. I think we all would agree that the goals of treatment really are to maximize function, which means motion, preservation of length and alignment, as well as, of course, the ability to policize. And we have to be mindful of the aesthetic considerations, which are important to our patients and their families.